This video summarizes what you should do when you have received either a new instrument or one just returned from service. So once you've opened the case, you should find a document holding either the calibration certificate or the server support, or maybe both. Depending on which accessories you have purchased, they will be in the surrounding slots. Please ensure they are all there and let us know if any of them are missing. Once you have removed the instrument from the case, power it up and wait for the self-test to finish. The instrument will evaluate itself and any error messages will appear after its completion. But as you have just received the instrument from us, there should be no error messages. Once that is completed, the first step would be to assess the flow fail point. So turn the pump on in the main read screen. If the instrument does not flow fail, the next thing to do would be to ensure the instrument does flow fail correctly. So cover the inlet with your finger and the instrument should flow fail within 10 seconds. If the instrument does flow fail, press the pump key to stop the warning and you can proceed to the next step. However, if it does not flow fail, even with the inlet blocked, go into the menu, key 2 for utilities and select 5 for flow fail. Decrease the point by 3 increments and retry the pump. Keep decreasing the point until the instrument flow fails. Once you've adjusted the flow fail point, the next step will be to zero calibrate the instrument. This is probably the most important step. Press the menu key key 3 for calibration. We'll calibrate the carbon dioxide first, so key 2 for the CO2 channel. We recommend using 100% nitrogen as it will give the best zero. However, we are aware that not everyone has access to this, so therefore, we'll need to assess which filters you have. If you are using the soda line filter, select the zero with N2 option. If you just have the PETF filter, select the zero with air option. For this video, I have attached the soda line filter by attaching it to the inlet port and twisting it clockwise. After it is attached, start the pump and let the instrument sit for 5 minutes. This is to allow the instrument to thermally calibrate and adapt to its environment. Once the 5 minutes is over, press start and the calibration will commence. The instrument should complete successfully and then you can press accept. Once the carbon dioxide channel has been calibrated, we'll move on to the oxygen channel. We generally recommend to span calibrate the instrument around the expected measuring levels. So if you have access to calibration gas, then please use this as the reference. If calibration gas is not available, calibrating it in air would also suffice. But please bear in mind that carry it outside or in a well ventilated area, i.e. not in the office. Change the reference level to reflect your calibration gas or 20.9 if you're doing it outside. Let the pump run before pressing start. Wait for the calibration to complete and exit back to the main reading screen. If you're happy with that, press exit and press 4 for view data. Just double check there are no readings on the instrument. Double check the memory is clear and you can now exit back to the main reading screen. You have now completed the recommended checks. However, this last step is if in some cases you wanted to assess the battery. To do this, please give the instrument a full charge of 3 to 4 hours. After, turn it back on and we'll use the login function. Set the parameters to a 1 minute interval, 15 second pump run time, and press 4 to start logging. Exit out of this and the instrument will start logging. Leave the instrument now until it runs out of battery. Once the instrument is charged, turn it back on and view the readings by pressing 4 in the menu. Divide the total by 60 and this will give you how many hours the instrument lasted for. The battery should last for a minimum of 8 hours. If you wanted to stop the logging midway, press the menu button 2 for utilities, 6 for logging and press 4 for stop logging.